from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Wednesday, February the 17th, 2021. An urgent cabinet meeting was called last night in Israel to discuss and vote on what was referred to as a sensitive humanitarian issue relating to Syria. Details were classified and still are for the most part, though it is being reported that the issue involves negotiations between Israel and Syria over an Israeli citizen, a young woman reportedly, who apparently entered the Syrian-controlled part of the Golan Heights accidentally, negotiating her release in exchange for two Syrian nationals being held in Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu did not comment in detail on those reports in an interview with Israel's army radio today, but said he was using his personal connections with Russian President Vladimir Putin to solve the problem. Russia is reportedly mediating the talks with Syria. Reuters cites the premier saying we are in the middle of sensitive contacts. He said we are acting discreetly and responsibly to handle the matter, and I believe we will solve it. And staying with the Prime Minister, his office tweeted that Netanyahu spoke over the phone with U.S. President Joe Biden this evening, the first conversation between the two since Biden took office. The Prime Minister's office wrote that the conversation was a warm and friendly one, which lasted about an hour, and that the two leaders noted their long-standing personal connection, and said that they would work together to continue strengthening the steadfast alliance between Israel and the U.S. Biden also commended Netanyahu on his leadership in the fight against the coronavirus, and the two exchanged ideas on ways to deal with the pandemic. They also discussed the future advancement of the peace accords, the Iranian threat, and regional challenges, and agreed to continue their dialogue. Prosecutors in Spain said they are looking into a neo-Nazi rally held Sunday in Madrid. The Federation of Jewish Communities of Spain had called for an investigation after some 300 people gathered at the event, which included anti-Semitic speeches and the Nazi salute. It was held as a tribute to the Blue Division, a unit of Spanish military volunteers that fought for the Nazis during World War II. Israel's ambassador to Spain, Rodica Radian Gordon, tweeted that the anti-Semitic proclamations made at the tribute are disgusting and cannot have a place in a democratic society. She said education and learning the truth about history is the way to prevent the past from repeating itself. The American Jewish Committee called the rally horrific and called on the Spanish government to censure these groups endangering democracy. Police in Armenia arrested a man said to be responsible for the desecration of a memorial in the capital of Yerevan. The memorial honors victims of the Holocaust and victims of the Armenian genocide, with writings in Armenian and in Hebrew. The Hebrew words and other parts of the memorial were discovered vandalized with spray paint last week. The suspect apparently turned himself into police. An investigation is ongoing. Jewish singer, songwriter, performer, and DJ Ari Gold has died. Gold was seen as a pioneer in the dance music genre and a trailblazing activist and icon for the LGBTQ community. His brother is comedian Elon Gold. Ari Gold died of leukemia on Sunday. He was 47 years old. Three student teams were awarded yesterday for their innovative ideas to benefit the Jewish community. Karen Shalev from Worcester University, Lika Tarikashvili from Bennington College in Tbilisi, Georgia, and Sruli Fruchter and Deborah Coopersmith from Yeshiva University were named the winners of the sixth annual Campus Pitch Competition, held virtually last night by the World Jewish Congress and the Israeli Consulate in New York. College students from around the world sent in their ideas to the competition, which awards its winners with a $5,000 grant to fund their proposals. 
The winning proposals this year included a walkthrough exhibition addressing misinformation about Israel and showcasing its true diversity, teaching young people about peace building, and the creation of an apolitical, bipartisan, and student-led think tank that fosters healthy debate between Jewish students on issues facing world Jewry. Well, as parts of the United States have been hard hit by severe winter weather, parts of Israel saw snow, which fell in the northern part of the country and in the capital of Jerusalem today. The Times of Israel shared some photos from the uncommon storm, including some unique to the current times we are living in, dealing with the coronavirus pandemic, like a snowman with a face mask on taken in the city of Tzfat. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Wednesday, February the 17th at 7 o'clock, Paul Strassman shares his story of survival on Witness. At 8, Marion Kaplan talks about her book, Hitler's Jewish Refugees, with Avi Noam Pat at UConn. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with the first Ethiopian-born Israeli to win Miss Israel, Titi Aina. At 10, a look at the immigration issue with Jeffrey Passel of the Pew Research Institute. And coming up next, it's Thinking Out Loud with Micah Halpern. And that's the JBS News Update for Wednesday, February the 17th, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy, stay well.